In today's case, we are in the United Kingdom in the Midland city of Leicester, a place with lots of hustle and bustle. It's rich in culture and diversity, with lots of art, sport, history, great schools and colleges. It's home to Leicester City Football Club and the Leicester Tigers. Just outside of the busy city center sits the Lime Road, which was home to 46-year-old Kiran Dadia and her ex-husband, 51-year-old Ashwin. The couple had an arranged marriage back in India in 1988 and went on to have two sons, Vivek and Shivam. Vivek lived and worked in Sheffield and Shivam lived at home as he finished off school. In 2014, after 26 years of marriage littered with a string of issues, the couple divorced. They agreed to continue living together while they worked on selling their house and after this, they could move on with their lives separately. Kiran had worked for a next call center for 17 years. Her son said she saw work as a second home and her colleagues were like family. Ashwin often worked long hours operating machines in a factory. Kiran was described as very intelligent, outgoing, loving fashion and makeup, and was an avid Leicester City fan. Her children said that she was always so caring and gentle and definitely the backbone of the family. A few years after Kiran and Ashwin had split, Kiran's sister offered to buy their home. After several months of paperwork, the moving dates were set. The plan was Kiran would stay a while longer and Ashwin would move out on January 16, 2017. On the morning of January 16, Shivam got up and got ready for school as usual. He usually had breakfast with his mother, but on this day, the house was empty and it seemed that Kiran had left for work early. Kiran had arrived back home a few hours later, just before half past two. When Shivam returned home at 3.30, he was surprised to see his mom wasn't there. As the cold January day quickly rolled into darkness, worry had started to grow. At about 6.30 p.m., Vivek received a call from his grandmother asking if he had heard from Kiran. He hadn't and he immediately shared the concern coming over to Leicester from Sheffield as soon as he hung up. It was his birthday the next day and the family would all be celebrating. His mother wouldn't be returning his calls. She would be calling him to plan the special day. Shivam used to find my app to try and track her phone. It pointed towards Mayfield Road, about a five minute walk away from their house. It didn't really show anything. It could well be just showing the route she took. To walk home that afternoon. The family collectively decided that there was no reason to hang about and they called 999 and reported her as missing. The police took some details and get a log of it, ready to start looking at it the following day. But before their investigation even really began, at 9 a.m. the next day, they received another call from one of the neighbors from the nearby Chroma Street by the bins near a shared alleyway and backyard. There was a large suitcase, which had appeared there overnight. It was very heavy, and the neighbors had decided to look inside. It was the body of a woman. This coupled with the missing persons report that had come in the evening before meant it didn't take long to identify that they had just found Kiran Dodia. They said it was like something out of a horror movie. Kiran had a bin liner over her head and plastic cable ties securing her hands and ankles, pushing them behind her back. Some torn pieces of latex gloves were also found in the suitcase and were sent off to testing right away. When police called Vivek to tell him, he was given the painful task of going to identify his mother. After this, detectives sat down with Kiran's family. Shivam and Vivek had some stories to share that pointed the investigation in one direction. And within a day, the full and awful truth about what had happened to Kiran would start to unravel. Kiran's family had told police that after Ashwin had been told that he needed to leave, the house in mid-January, he had acted like it wasn't even happening, he refused to pack or make any movements towards finding another place to live. And it was just the tip of the iceberg of the problems between the pair. 
Vivek and Shivam said that since they were very young, they had been subjected to torrents of abuse from their father. When Vivek was 13, he said that his father had tried to burn him with an iron and would often hit them with things lying around the house. He would often physically hurt Kiran and hurl verbal abuse at her as well. And as the years had gone on, the abuse had become worse and Vivek and Shivam were forcing themselves in the middle of the pair in and bid to protect their mother from being hurt. Ashwin soon stopped giving money to its bills, resulting in Kiran working even harder. And he was drinking more than ever, which was adding to the problem. Fact that his ex-wife was allowed to stay in the house and he wasn't was a huge cause of contention, and Ashwin would often lose his temper over it. Kiran had also recently signed up to a dating app, telling everybody the divorce was long over and she was excited to move on and meet someone new. When she signed up, Shivam recalled her laughing and saying to him, What if he ends up killing me? As Shivam gave the police a rundown of what had happened on January 16th, it became more and more obvious that Ashwin was the only person that showed enough hatred to its Karen to do something like that to her. Shivam said, the second he came home and he realized his mother wasn't there and wasn't answering her phone, he turned to his father and said, What have you done? I know you have done something. He said that Ashwin could not give him a straight answer. He just stared at him and shrugged. Kiran had been found so close to her home that had made the police's job a lot easier when it came to looking at the cameras around the street. At 6.19 p.m. on January the 16th, two cameras on neighboring streets picked up some very sinister footage. The suitcase that Kiran had been forced into was seen dragged through the streets. And although he had tried to conceal his face, police determined the person hauling it along was Ashwin Dadia. Two days after she was found, Ashwin was placed under arrest and police began to piece together exactly what had happened. Within minutes of her walking through the door that afternoon, an argument had broken out. Ashwin told police that Kiran had started shouting at him because he hadn't packed anything and he was due to leave that day. The argument soon became physical and Ashwin said he had lost control. He hit Kiran over the head several times before strangling her with her own scarf. After this, he forced her into the suitcase and dragged it outside. He then cleaned up the blood and waited for Shivam to get home at 3.30. As Shivam was out and about frantically trying to find his mother just after 6 p.m., Ashwin quickly pulled his suitcase back out to the street before hurrying home half an hour later. Ashwin disposed of Kiran's phone, which was later found on the roof of a nearby business, and he also put all cleaning materials and her bloody clothes into another suitcase, which has never been found. After he was charged with murder, testing on the latex gloves came back, and the DNA on them, as expected, belonged to Ashwin. Almost a year after Kiran Dadia has been found, the trial of her ex-husband began at Leicester Crown Court. Vivek and Shivam both testified, painting an unhappy and rage-filled tone, caused by solely their father, they said. Ashwin's lawyer asked Vivek, did you like him? Not the abusive parts, he said. His lawyer said, can you tell me something nice he did? Vivek replied, no. You can't think of one thing in your whole life, she asked. I can't, he said. The prosecution said that when you put all the evidence together, 
the CCTV, the DNA evidence from inside the latex gloves found in the suitcase, and his prior history of abuse, you can be sure that the defendant's claims of not having anything to do with and not knowing anything about Kieran's death are a pack of lies. What can be the intention when one person strangles another? The answer is obvious. The defense team were pushing for a manslaughter conviction. As Ashwin was claiming it was all self-defense, he said he was being bullied by the rest of the family, including his sons, and was forced to defend himself when Kieran came home and attacked him. The prosecution said to him, you strangled her until she was dead. Ashwin replied, my hand, yes, I pressed her neck, then I wrapped the scarf around. I didn't know what was happening, I was just holding her. Kiran's family all said this was nonsense and not in Kiran's nature. She would have never instigated anything and lived in a state of fear most of the time. After just a couple of hours of deliberations, the jury found him guilty of murder and Ashwin Dodia was handed a life sentence with a minimum term of 18 years behind bars. The judge did not hold back in his sentencing remarks. He said, Ashwin was far less intelligent than Kiran and was unable to cover his tracks. He said, in my judgment, you were arrogant, bullying, and bent upon maintaining control. In short, I'm quite satisfied the course of destruction of your family was a course charted by you. Your selfish pride fueled your anger. She was barely over five feet tall and of slight build. She was injured and bleeding. You must have overpowered her easily and had her at your mercy. Of mercy, you showed none. The judge also praised Vivek and Shivam, calling them fine young men, of whom any parent would be proud. Shivam said he can't remember his last moments with his mother. He knew he would have spoken to her before he went to bed, but he couldn't remember what they had said to each other, and this causes him pain every day. He also wonders what might have happened to him if he had come home any earlier and seen what his father was doing. Vivek agreed and said, I now find myself imagining my brother coming home earlier than expected that day. He would have seen our mom being murdered, and I have no doubt that he would have been killed too. Vivek said, whilst we can never get our mother back, her strength will live on through us. Every morning, I still go on my phone and I text mom good morning, as I did every day before. It's the only normal thing that I'm holding on to. Kieran's family have released the following statement. Kieran was full of life, with a vibrant personality, a loving, caring mother with a very thoughtful daughter, sister and aunt. Her friendly and charismatic nature meant she had many friends. She was simply beautiful and loved having photographs taken. She was the backbone of the family, very kind, generous and angelic. We as a family cannot even begin to describe the loss and emptiness in our heart. Her perpetual smile will be missed every day of our lives by everyone who knew her. Kieran had lots of dreams and aspirations which were untimely taken away by this demonic act. Life without her will never be the same. We cannot thank enough for the support given to us throughout this difficult time. And we would like to especially thank East Midlands Special Operations Major Crime Unit, including Senior Investigating Officer D.I. Simon Shuttleworth, Officer in the Case, D.S. Mark Wesley, and D.C. Jenny Tatterson, our family liaison officer. Leicestershire Police and the Crown Prosecution Service. They have all worked tirelessly to bring this evil person to justice. He showed no remorse in coming forward and taking responsibility for his barbaric actions. We would also like to thank Victim Support, Next Directory and our own employees, Queen Elizabeth College, Sri Hindu Temple, Asian Funeral Service, our family, friends, neighbours and the public for their continuous support throughout this ordeal. We would also like to thank all of those who provided CCTV to the inquiry. Although today there has been justice for Kiran, this does not take away our heartache. Her energy will resonate with us forever. We will be living this sentence for the rest of our lives.